The views and opinions of the hosts and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the position of the management and staff of Guardian Network. From what the I may find out, certain people not like me. Everyone got us bag of thing now. Makes true me, I do it like Nike. But me not fear no guy now. No matter how hard they must fight me. Me just a go and do my thing now. Talking Heads with Naughty is brought to you by BTC, Burger King, the Cancer Treatment Centers of America, the Cleveland Clinic, Dunkin' Donuts, Fine Threads, First Caribbean Bank, Grand Bahama News, John's Department Store, Jokers Wild, KFC, the Ministry of Health and Wellness, Naughty Johnny's, Percy's Island Games, and Tropical Gyros. Now me and the dog, them a link up Big truck, 20 inch rim, just a spin up. The pioneer just a kick up And a hip hop out a lip up. You can't see the star to the tin top Plus me and the cube and a link up Rose gold to the cube and link up How much ice just a hurt and me rings up From what day you may find out Certain people don't like me Everyone talk a smack a thing now Bex throw me a do it like Nike But me not fear no guy now No matter how hard they must fight me Me just a go and do me thing now Me just a do it like Nike 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 the Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads is on and popping your boy Naughty in your company right up until 6 p.m. And uh, let me just tell you on this Tuesday, man, Murphy is alive and well, but can't go wrong, will go wrong. But don't worry, me and Murphy will fight it out. I still got about eight more hours left in this day, and me and Murphy will duke it out. Yeah, yeah. But anyhow, nonetheless, I'm no fair, I'm in the chair. We got a great show lined up for you today. Obviously, you know, it's Tuesday, so we got the Grand Bahama Report coming your way. Sarah Craig and Darren Cooper will be chiming in live, so we'll get to them in, in short order. And as you know, each and every Tuesday, you got the Grand Bahama Supplement in The Guardian, all right? So be sure to check out everything that's popping in Grand Bahama, courtesy of the Grand Bahama News, in the Tuesday Supplement, each and every Tuesday right here in The Guardian. Now you know how to chime in. Phone lines are open, 323-6232, 325-4316, toll free Family Islands. Any one of the Family Islands, toll free, 242-300-5720, 300 Five seven two zero, text lines powered by BTC four two two GR nine six. That's four two two four seven nine six. Stream us live. Take us wherever you want to go. GuardianTalkRadio.com. dot com. That's GuardianTalkRadio.com. dot com. Cable channel nine six nine. BTC flow channel six one two. That's how you get it in. That's how you get it on for smart news, well fresh news, smart talk all day right here on Guardian Radio ninety six point nine FM. And don't forget it's Tuesday. KFC reminds you it's all about Crazy Tuesday. You get those five pieces of chicken for 10 bucks, all right? So mix and match down there at your favorite KFC location. Go original, go spicy, mix it up. Original and spicy, go barbecue. You know, it's all there for you, waiting on you, all right? So be sure to check them out on that. You know, Crazy Tuesday, you can't beat that, man. Five pieces of chicken for 10 bucks from the Colonel. It's all G double O D good. Let them do the cooking for you today because you know it's always finger licking good. All right? In addition to that, John's remind. That they're now the official distributor for Chef Chefwear, the most respected global culinary brand. John's carries chef jackets, chef pants, aprons, and hats, all designed to keep culinary professionals cool and comfortable. John's is also now carrying chef knife sets by Mercer Culinary Tools that make a better chef. Available at John's Carewear, Rosetta Street, and Carmichael Road. All right, both locations available for you Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. New arrivals in stock right now, Fine Threads, both locations, the flagship store, Top of the Hill, Mackey Street, and the Southwest Shopping Plaza location. Be sure to check them out. Check them out online, finethreads.com. Do your shopping online, then arrange for pickup at any one of those convenient Fine Thread locations. And don't forget, both locations available for you Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. All right, now, with that being said, let's take a quick commercial break. Flip side of the break, right out of the gate. We'll be going to Freeport. Grand Bahama Report comes your way. Sarah Kirkby and Darren Cooper will be live with me on the flip side of the break as the Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this.
ready to experience a classic Dunkin' Donut as the ultimate coffee delight? The new Dunkin' Boston Cream Latte is the perfect balance of sweetness and indulgence. Super brewed bowl espresso, creamy milk, rich dark chocolate and vanilla f- all topped with whipped cream and drizzled with chocolate. Available hot or iced, the Dunkin' Boston Cream Latte has the taste sensation to make your heart sing. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. What would you do with extra cash? Plan a trip. Overhaul my wardrobe. With CIBC First Caribbean, you can get comfy with savings on your mortgage cost. Buy or build your home or switch your mortgage to us and get up to U.S. $1,000 off the loan application fee. Up to U.S. $2,000 off home insurance. With up to U.S. $10,000 towards switching costs, your pockets will be comfy too. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash get comfy for more information. Conditions apply. Put your best foot forward this school year by shopping at John's for your back to school foot care needs. From toddlers to college students. Have your child looking smart in a pair of Hush Puppies, Sperry, Easy Strider brand styles, and many more. Durable and sharp, the kids will step with confidence all year. Need socks and a belt? We've got you covered. And don't forget a new backpack and lunch containers. You can find all this and more at the best prices and customer service in town at John's on Rosetta Street and Carmichael Road. John's, we put fashion at your feet. We're going to give you a check every week for a year. Island game, keep you with it. Percy Pension Plan. Dream big, we will help you live it. Percy Pension Plan. Island game, we got you. Percy Pension Plan. From the friends you can trust, it's winning is a must. Come play the game, you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account, and it's easy training at Percy's Island Game. Juicy fried chicken, mashed potatoes with gravy, and a hot buttery biscuit for only $5. That's genius. Part of the KFC Genius menu, the KFC $5 snack box delivers on flavor and value. Need to feed more than one? KFC's Great Picks has got you covered. Packed with four thighs and four legs, fried to golden perfection, plus four buttery biscuits for only $20. More genius. Hungry for deals? The Genius Menu at KFC. It's finger licking good. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. The Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads continues right now. Let's get down to Grand Bahama. We got Sarah Kirkby and Darren Cooper joining us live. What's up, gang? What's going on? How's everybody, man? How's everything in Freeport? We're alive and kicking. I think Darren's kicking. I'm not sure. <laughs> well, I'm Darren, Darren always kicking. kicking something, man. <laughs> if it ends Darren kicking, we know it's all good. What's happening? He's out of sleepy when I called him a minute ago. <laughs> hey, wake up, Darren. I am. I am. <laughs> so what's yeah. new what's new in Grand Bahama, man? Well, we have a lot to talk to you about. I'll, I'm going to get through the paper, but I, I would like, because we missed last week. To recap I'd you like, guys' um, meeting. Yeah, we got to recap how that meeting went. So let me just get through the, the paper if I can really quick. And thank you, thank you. I don't know if I can say this enough to you, Naughty. Thank you for promoting the paper for me all the time. I really do appreciate it. No worries. We're getting man. there. A lot of people still don't realize. Everyone in NASA knows. I got to work on my Grand Bahama people knowing about this wonderful paper we have. Um, and uh, but I am very pleased. We got some good stories this week. Uh, airlift boost. I know the the Ministry of Tourism, particularly the um, Deputy Director General who used to live here, Kenneth Roman. I know very well uh, is working very hard on our flights. Now, we, that's a whole conversation different about the airport itself, and um, but the flights and what we need here um, has been going very well. You remember, we've had the Italian flights over the summer, and um, now that they're starting to end off soon, but they've done really well. And There were tons of Italians all around the island. They really loved it. You saw them everywhere at LMP parks. They were going all to Banana Bay restaurants. They were all over the beaches, and they were loving the island, which was really great for us. And so that's an interesting read today. And always when Magnus Alnebeck is in from Pelican Bay Resort, it's always going to be interesting. 
Magnus has a lot to say, which is yep. good. Um, we have an update on the project, the Stein and Steininger. Um, careful how you say that. Um, careful how you say that. <laughs> There'll be caught telling me you say it. <laughs> and so there's an update on that, which is really great. These are two guys that have had huge su- success in Morocco. And so they've come here and they've absolutely fallen in love with the island. So it's their update. It's good to see that things are progressing. They had a, a, a little bit of work to do on the canal system and what they had to do work on the island and getting things done. But it looks like they're good to go. And then we have the UB Ignite program. So this is where uh, they're working with IDB on um, people pitching ideas and plans. And this is through the Northern uh, Campus and how they can help you as young entrepreneurs. I would encourage all young um, Grand Bahamians to really pay attention to this article and what's out there because it is a lot of money that IDB has given them for funding. It's uh, through International American Development Bank. It's $500,000. And so there are ways to get these funds to help people, to young people start businesses. I'm, I'm hoping my son's looking at this one too. There are lots of things that need to be done, especially with other businesses, with Carnival coming on the island, these other new projects. They're going to need other uh, things to add to our tourism product. It's something they talk about all the time. So this is a really good program. So I would encourage everyone to find this article online, buy the paper, obviously, and share that. And then we have a nice little happy story. It's a happy paper today. It's one of your favorites. <laughs> and uh, we have a young junior minister of tourism, which was really lovely to see and how proud her parents were of her and supporting her. So that we thought that was a really nice story to include as well. And, um, and then you've got the rest of the story on the, on the airport. We have um, a couple more that we're working on, just waiting to get legalese on those, and we'll be releasing those stories soon. So I pre-tease those for you. There you go. And that's me. There's, there's your good. Your now good we got all the Pollyanna out the way. There you go. <laughs> now, now we got to talk, Darren. How good? Thank you, sir. I appreciate it as always. Um, Darren, how is it, my brother? I'm good. I'm right here. All right, uh, listening, to, listening to Sarah always. Yeah, man. Good stories. <laughs> I want to break out my pom poms, man. Yeah. You know? Give me a G. Yeah. Give me a B. Give me a pre-port. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we're trying, we're trying. So, so I'm so surprised that Sarah didn't talk about it from Saturday night, but that's fine. <laughs> You're right. giving me a very hard time, Naughty. Very I was just dancing. I was just dancing a little bit at an event. <laughs> All right, here we go. Darren, real quick. No, let's get the formalities out of the way, and then we got to talk about a few things. Still no airport, correct? Still no hotel deal. Still correct, correct? None of that, right? No airport, no hotel deal. All right, just making sure. I just want to keep you know, just keep an eye on that. Now, I know you. I know you and Sarah had a big powwow last week. You all got to, well, to meet um, with some, you know, key individuals. I think we, but we've been, we've been, uh, myself and Sarah and a team of licensees here in Grand Bahama has been hard at it, um, trying to safeguard, protect, and make sure that uh, our voices are heard as relates to government position with the Grand Bahama Port Authority. Um, you know, we, we, we want to continue to maintain and stress the importance of government and port coming together and working together for the betterment. Um, we, as licensees, um, you know, we would have hosted a educational seminar. And it's so unfortunate that the chairman uh, sees the need to try and downplay um, uh, the educational seminar. And, and what is so disturbing is that whenever we seek to empower ourselves with knowledge, uh, we have persons in that type of capacity uh, seeks to discourage persons from getting knowledge because they know that if we are powerful enough with knowledge, then they themselves will be in problems because we now will know and understand our rights. So we would have had the educational seminar. We had over 176 uh, persons that came out to the seminar. Uh, well, 176 licensees and 178 uh, persons overall. Um, yeah, it's a great, great turnout. It, Great turnout from all different uh, of Grand Bahama, I mean, in Freeport, um, basically to be educated. Because one of the things we realize is that a lot of us don't know the Hawksburg Creek Agreement. A lot of us he- keep on hearing about it, um, but we wanted to know some things. And so um, we were able to hear from Kirk to, to give us the history of the Hawksburg Creek Agreement, the accomplishments, 
um, of, of the Grand Port Authority under this agreement. And, and the truth be told, we look at Freeport as a well-organized, well-designed, well-infrastructured city. Um, and and we won't trade we won't trade our city um, for any other parts of the Bahamas, you know. And so, uh, whilst that agreement worked, then you know we understand that there has been some challenges over the years. Um, and and so, one of the things that we we did was we empowered licensees to understand that nothing can be done without us. We are eighty percent. Um, voice, you know, we have we have the ability to 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 make a move and to stop a move because we got to be participants of it. And it's so amazing that that government doesn't even see or understand the importance of engaging licensees. You understand? Um, um, and so we were able also prior to that to have a meeting with the Grand Mama Port Authority. Uh, and I must say that the Grand Mama Port Authority has been very cordial in meeting uh, persons whenever they make a request. Uh, I must give it to them. Even though uh, the president does, does wrap up the meeting before 5 o'clock, every meeting I go to, you know, we got to get home by 5. Um, he, they are very cordial in making sure that they hear the concerns of the people, um, licensees. And, 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 and even though uh, they may not have all of the answers, um, one of the main things was for us to hear the vision um, uh, on where we're going and how we plan to get there. Um, and so that happened, and the educational seminar happened. There are, more, there are more things that we are talking about, and we're hoping in the days to come we'd be able to public make it public. It's our next uh, step. We're not fighting government or port. We're not, we're not here to, to, to uh, fight them. We're here to work with them. We're here to encourage them to work together and to make sure that we, who are licensees are protected. I enjoy the benefits, Naughty, of the Hawksville Creek Agreement. I enjoy the concessions that the agreement provides for me. Some things I didn't even realize that I was entitled to have for my business. And because of that educational seminar, I now understand even more so the way my born operates. Um, and so now I'm, I'm in process of dialoguing with customs and, and helping them to understand that you've been in error for so long and you've been you've been holding me back as a licensee from doing some things as relates to my business um, because of your error behavior and so um, those were two of our accomplished uh, events that um, I think for me uh, very proud to be a part of the team um, and making sure that we continue to educate ourselves uh, for better advancement. Well, that you got. I, I appreciate y'all continuing to to keep that up and keep that fight going, and continue to to, to be a voice. And and obviously, you know, it's a step in the right direction. It's some sort of progress. Yeah. It is, and I I think people were a lot of some people. Got, you know, we obviously had some people there were a little bit confused on on what we were doing there exactly, and what we're just trying to do is to form a stronger association. Um, you know, we're, we're the Freeport Licensee Association. We're a group, but we also do support the Grand Bahama Chamber of Commerce. And we would encourage everyone to be a member of the chamber because together we're a larger voice. There's 3,000 licensees here in the Port Authority area. And we are part of the decision making and according to, you know, the, the law, which is the Hawksville Creek Agreement. But we all also have to understand it. So it was really great. And I was so pleased. We had turnout of just a variety of people, and we're hoping to do more of these seminars. And um, it was great to be involved in, and great to come together as a community as well. We had great speakers, and Dylan, one who was just very good and, and, and very knowledgeable. So it was great. And your help in telling, uh, telling everyone about that event was super naughty. Thank you. And also, just, just, just so that we can stress, um, that event was not funded by the Grand Mama Port Authority or funded by government. Right. That yeah. was licensees putting their money where their mouth is and making that happen. So we weren't being puppeted by the port or by government. We weren't representing any of them. There were persons who came to the meeting uh, wanting to vent, um, and we needed, we had to quickly remind them that we share the same frustration you do share as well because we are licensees and we are not, we are not here representing government or port. 
and the government of port has representation here. They weren't invited, uh, but we do have persons from the port who are licensees, and we do have persons who uh, in the government are licensees. They were invited under that premise, but it was a strictly funded um, um, program by licensees coming together and making that happen. And so, again, kudos to all of the, 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 the licensees that played their important role in making sure that that event um, went off without a hitch, you know, um, and and not only that we just had a, a meeting, naughty, but 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 the licensees went as far as providing refreshments and making sure that when you get off, you know, you got had a long day. Um, we wanted to do a two hour session, which we were like two hours and probably uh, 10, 15 minutes over, but it was it was well turned out. We had we had persons um, standing, um, persons were interested person's uh, mouth was dropping as the information was being um, laid out. Um, not only that we had Dylan Knowles, but we also had Chris Lowe from Kelly's, who has gone up against Bahamas Customs right. um, um, when they when they seek to to uh, uh, interfere with his business. Um, and so he was a presenter, and he talked about the bond situation. He opened up a lot of our eyes to a lot of stuff, you know, and so he was also a presenter as well. And that was encouraging enough. We had we had we had persons like a, um, attorneys and, and other business owners coming from on the floor, um, going to the mic, the question time, and basically saying, "We believe that this time, right now, is the time to start a Freeport uh, licensee association because it's never been done. It needs to be done. We need to be united. We need to have one voice." And we need now to go after both entities to make sure that the island of Grand Bahama takes off and we're going, we're going to be the one to make sure we push them to do it. Well, you have to keep on pushing. That. And, and, and obviously, you see the support of Grand Bahamians, the turnout that yes. you had. So you do yeah. have a following. You do have a base. You do have a platform. You do have traction. And you know what is, what is, what is, what is, what, I mean, of course, you know, um, I mean, I, I'm Darren. So, so I speak for Darren and Darren only. You know, um, not for the association or anyone else, but it's so you know it's so uh, disheartening to to even hear um, 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 the minister of foreign affairs discouraging Grand Bahamian, seeing a negative picture of an educational event, and 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 that we believe that more may have come out, but of course you got the PLPs who will support what their chairman say and not understand that he is keeping them from a level of knowledge because he wants them to continue to be yes sir, yes ma'am to them. And all we're seeking to do is to empower them with knowledge. Where there's knowledge, there's power. And, and, and that's the problem with our politicians. They hate for us to be knowledgeable and to be empowered. And so, and so I'm very disappointed that he would have, even after the event, he still sought to do um, to do damage by trying to downplay. Oh, there was only sixty people. Um, he got this report. Well, clearly, who gave him the report? Naughty. They either were blind or they were slow. Because uh, if you look at the room, okay, you looked at the room, and not only did you look at the room, we got the documents to show of those who registered, who signed, who gave us their emails, who gave us their numbers. You understand? And so all of that. Um, um, happened and the reason for that form or those forms is for us now to begin because because we have a listing of license sees business owners I mean businesses but we have no no information on majority of them and so now as we count do this educational seminar compile information because we are seeking to form an association along um, with uh, encouraging person because the association along with the chamber will be a united force we hope that will be uh, um, working together for the betterment of Grand Bahama. And so uh, the aim is just to form the association. Persons have been calling for the formation of the association. Uh, and I think um, in, in, in short order, I think we should be able to have that going. And so um, um, I say to those in, 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 in the office of power, stop discouraging uh, Bahamians from empowering themselves. Stop them, stop allowing Bahamians to have to be at your beck and call begging you for something. A will empower their people so that they wouldn't have to worry about their people. 
And so, and so uh, we don't want handouts. We want hand up. We want opportunity to be able to do for ourselves and not be obligated to anybody other than ourselves. Well, I mean, how how long how, how long have that, that been the cry? You know, that's been the passion. That's been the cry of, of, from Freeport for a long time. That to, to yeah, allow yeah. you all to stand and represent and and have a voice and be part of the process. And now the people now understands that the eighty percent of us have a little more power than we even we even knew, and we now know, and we are sh- we are sharing and spreading the word that join the association. We are powerful. We are we, we are stronger together. All right, I got. We a- don't need to wait on government. We got we could do this ourselves. I got a couple of texts coming in, but we got to get to the break. So let's take the break. And on the flip side of the break, I got a few texts for you guys in relation to Freeport. Okay, great. All right, and, and we'll fire them up on the flip side. I got it. The Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Get the flavor explosion that'll satisfy all your bacon cravings. The KFC Sweet and Smoky Bacon Sandwich from the Fried Chicken Experts features two crispy strips of bacon on a premium 100% white meat chicken filet, layered with two slices of cheese, smoky chipotle mayo, and our secret surprise, snap, all stacked on a buttery brioche bun. Experience the Sweet and Smoky Explosion today, as it's here for a limited time. KFC Sweet and Smoky Bacon Sandwich, it's finger licking good. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. Means more hope. Learn more at cancercenter.com. With fine style with elegant taste, the fine threads is your place. If you want those slots hemmed or just taking the waist, the fine threads is your place. If you want to look suave and debonair everywhere you go, like you're supposed to be in a video. Want to step out and look great, the fine threads is your place. With fine style with elegant taste, the fine threads is your place. Is your place. Too many debt bills? Overdue on loan payments? Improve your credit score and credit report with the Bahamas Credit Bureau. Shrink your debt payments with a debt consolidation loan and built-in savings that pays you 5% interest. Call 823-4374. Craving a sandwich that hits all the right spots? Look no further. Introducing Dunkin's newest star, the Oven Toasted Turkey Sandwiches. Made with love and sourdough bread, these classics are reinvented with a twist. Sink your teeth into layers of delicious deli turkey, crispy lettuce, and white cheddar. Plus, we've added the perfect kick with smoky bacon and your choice of creamy avocado spread or zesty chipotle sauce. Dunkin's got your sandwich cravings covered all day, every day. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin's. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Back at you on the Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads. And uh, Sarah Kirkby, Darren Cooper, uh, still joining me from Freeport. It is Tuesday. You know, we got the uh, Grand Bahama Report, the Freeport Report. Naughty here's a text. Naughty, tell Darren, stay strong and keep the vibe alive. Uh, but really, do you think the hotel deal will ever happen under this administration? And you should definitely keep Fred out of your business. 
That's the first one. Well, I, I, I related to the hotel deal, um, you know, I think the government, uh, this sitting government now understands and realizes that uh, they've, 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 uh, uh, they, they, they've, they've, they've overpromised and underdeliver as relates to that property. Uh, many persons do not know, but the government right now is is putting quite a bit of dollars in refurbishing parts of and and and, and the restaurants and and I believe that the next step would be probably in the next budget to be able to renovate uh, what's left there. Um, you know, I I I, I would hope I I'm hope I'm hopeful and prayerful that something happens. With it, if the government sees the need to renovate it and get it back up and running, I would hope that they would see the need to turn it over to a brand um, that something can happen. I, I honestly, uh, I'm on the outside trying to find out what's going on the inside. And so it's been two years now. Uh, let the record reflect. It's been two years gone Saturday. Um, and, you know, we, we're watching and looking at pictures of, of ministers, them fixing speed bumps or putting speed bumps down in their constituency or or we're looking to see them um, talking about what they, what bus stop they painted and, and, and those type of things. But when it comes to Grand Bahamas economic uh, boom and turnaround, you know, we don't see much of it. As it relates to the whole, the airport, um, same thing. You know, we, we've been months now from the business outlook and, and nothing, absolutely nothing. I saw a couple of weeks ago an assessment being done on the front part of the international airport. And I, I was curious, wanted to know if they're if they're hoping to renovate uh, what is left there and try and do something later. I don't know, but um, this government's not saying much, and and they say they care about Grand Bahama, but they really don't care about us because um, the prime minister has not found the time yet, yet to speak with Grand Bahamian business community or even the Chamber of Commerce. He sends the minister for Grand Bahama. All right, I got another one here for you um, in relation to uh, Steininger Island. Um, Sarah, maybe you can answer this, or Darren, maybe you can answer this. Um, it, not even, it seems to be a, a, an impeccable resort. It, it, when will it get off the ground? When will it become a reality? Is that faster becoming a possibility they- than the hotel deal in Freeport? Sometimes these <laughs> texts do not punctuate everything. just be jumbled right <laughs> But I think yes, they're asking, okay. how yes. long will this take to come to fruition? Is this more talks, or is this something that will actually uh, be a reality faster than seeing the hotel being sold? I, I think this one's definitely reality. They've just built all the property up. They've fenced it. They're clearing the back part of the land now. And then that, so as far as we know, that's the reality. They sounded very positive the other day when our reporter, Barbara, talked to them. So I think that one's a go, as is which are just waiting for their um, meeting to happen uh, for their, with DAP, they have to do their public meeting and they're just waiting for a date to get that organized. So those two are definitely going. Carnival, uh, you know, they named what their place will be the other day, but they also are going to give an update. Uh, From what I'm hearing, everything's been going very well for them and moving along with, you know, they've got to be ready because they've got uh, ships coming in soon. And, you know, Grand Bahama is a great port for that because we're so close to the states. And as, you know, everyone tries to cut down on fuel costs, Grand Bahama is a great call. The beaches they're going to go to, they are absolutely stunning. So I think those are good things. In my and my thoughts for Darren, like on the hotel, I was very disappointed that the hotel sale didn't happen. I do hope that the Minister of Tourism is working on it diligently. I You know, I really hope that the RCL deal would go through. And it's a, it's a shame that the, the government... Did not let that happen. I really thought home porting was the way to go for us with cruise ships coming in here or people flying in with this new airport they want mm-hmm. they want to build. The capacity would be amazing. It was a huge one right after the pandemic, but I mean, it never really came yeah. to fruition. No, and I think home porting would be fantastic. Supposedly Fort Lauderdale and Miami have huge issues. It's a lot of traffic. And, you know, so we could, we could take some of that and they could come here. Fly in, have a couple of days on the island, yep. get on their cruise ship here, and then and and then leave. So if we've got not, why not? It you know, sense. to me that's still a possibility, and I would love that to be revisited. Um, to me, I think that's possible. I mean, I always I've said it before on here. I think Richard Branson should get a call and say, "Come on over from Bimini. Let's get you in a second hotel. He's got flights. He's got planes. He's got ships. And now the hotel it would be perfect for him. Paint that baby red, and we'd be good. He could take the Virgin." Um, you know, logo, it would be perfect. Yeah. Uh, the other thing we have to think about, and we have not had any news on it, 
and it's the one story that we're trying to find out about. It's it's the MSC and RCL deal that's supposedly happening at the harbor. Um, <laughs> we haven't been giving much details. We didn't get. We haven't received anything from the port. So I presume that's all going on. Uh, you know, MSC is very heavily involved in the container port, but this is their cruise ship lines which come into Nassau. Um, and I remember when you know they were first coming. I worked for the company and did some work for them. Then their beautiful cruise line. Um, Diane Phillips to tell you how wonderful that cruise line is as well. And she works for RCL. So, you know, um, it's something I'm hoping we'll, we'll come and do something at our Harbor as well. That would be another great thing for Freeport, but yeah, we're all a bit frustrated on the airport and the hotel. Got some other texts coming in. Uh, Naughty, I'm very proud of Sarah and Darren for educating ground Bahamians regarding the Hawksville Creek agreement. It is very empowering. Good stuff. Yay! <laughs> so there you go. You got you, you got a fan base out there. You, you, you got a yeah, fan. I just want we got one. <laughs> I I think like Darren said, there was a lot of time we spent on that education uh, seminar, and I have to thank um, some other people uh, who really helped us as well. But uh, people don't understand exactly how that Hawksville Creek Agreement works, and they don't see how Wallace Groves took this island from a barren forest to where it was. And there were certain steps. There was money that was spent that people don't realize. Darren gave us a great story about, um, he had taught, he, we were talking the other day about the schools and what Edward St. George did. I mean, he built an auditorium and that was not part of the deal that he had to make. Part of the agreement of the Hawksville Creek Agreement is you have to hit certain things and build certain things and accomplish certain goals. And the Port Authority has done a lot of those and they've made those and they've built Freeport into this beautiful city. But now we need the government and that Port Authority group to work together to let these investors in and to make it a smoother process than it is right now. Another one I'm coming in regarding, I think it's the Six Sense, right? Six Senses? Six Senses, yes. Is there any update on that, Darren or Sarah? This coming from a texter. Sarah, yeah. Yeah, so Six Senses is going well. Um, they are looking really strong. There'll be some Big news coming out in November, I can tell you that, off the record. <laughs> and um, like you earlier, they are still in their process of going through their environmental impact assessment with DEP, and they are just waiting for that date. They had one, but unfortunately, um, it had to be canceled due to um, timing issues, so we're just waiting for that, and then I believe everything will be on the go for them. And th this is a company that's very invested in in our island and um, Six Senses brand, I've gotten to know now because I've been doing some work with them. It's phenomenal. It's a really elevated brand for us, and it's uh, great for Grand Bahama to be to be getting the quality of what we're going to get from Six Senses. They're very much um, an environmental brand. They're very much about local community. They want to invest that. They love everything about um, places like the. Uh, Keith Cooper, the the Stingray Whisperer, they want to be involved in everything like that, local organic farming. So they're they're going to be a really great company for us. It's just again dotting those eyes and crossing the T's with with depth. All right. Um, so I we got to get to the break, guys. But I appreciate you know you guys chiming in. I'm, I'm looking at the time. Adam producer telling me got to get to the news, but we'll do it again next Tuesday. Thanks so much again for for being so candid. And um, I I know sometimes. <laughs> You all, you all keeps it all politically correct, and sometimes the Texas <laughs> want you to get a little more fired up and, and keep uh, getting that info to us every Tuesday so we can let everybody know what's going on in Grand Bahama because it, it matters, and, and Grand Bahama is just as important as any other island in this archipelago. We need to make sure that you guys get what you all need. Thank you. We love to mm -hmm. hear that. <laughs> Darren, be safe. Keep throwing blows, my brother. Always enjoy seeing the videos and stuff on social media, man. You should be carrying on by it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, man. I got that Buju take us to the break, man. Thank you, Grand Bahama. We'll Thank talk you. again next Tuesday, Thank man. You. And Buju gonna take right. us to the break right now. We'll see you right after the news in the five o'clock hour to talk sports. Pearly will be in the building. Don't touch it. Did I had a close one yesterday? Ja put an angel over me. Be strong. All up for meditation. One day things must get better. Don't you go down. One day, things must get better Be strong, and I say Well, I for meditation One day, things must get better Don't you go down Keep your head above the water, One day, things must get better
things must get better. The rich is one seed, but the fool with overstanding search at the mouth. Poor man mourn the rich, riches increase as it be not grieve. Riches are not forever. Every not the oppressor choose none of his way. This is Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Fresh news, smart talk, all day. Back at you on the Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads. We're into the 5 o'clock hour, so you know we're talking sports. Now we got Pearly zoomed in. Pearly should be zooming in. Pearly, what's football, going on? Yeah. Right, uh, yeah. uh, all right there, Pearly boy. We got, hey, we got lots to talk about today, so let's get the formalities out of the way. Like today in sports history, all brought to you, of course, by Naughty Johnny's. Always well worth the trip out there to the Old Fort Shopping Plaza Monday through Friday. Great for lunch and dinner. Then on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday, great for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And don't forget, uh, they got happy hour every Wednesday and Friday. 5 to 7 p.m. So be sure to check them out, all right? 377-7776. Give them a call, see what they got going on for you. On this day, September 19th in sports history, 1901, all Major League Baseball games were canceled for the funeral of U.S. President William McKinley. 1949, Ralph Kiner, a National League player that hit 50 home runs in two different seasons. Before Pete Rose reached the 100-hit plateau for the 20, uh, 22nd consecutive year, he also tied the National League record for doubles with 725. 1997, Mark McGuire became the first Major League player to hit 20 or more home runs for two teams in the same season. It was his 54th home run of the year. I take it that would be the trade from the A's to the, to the Cardinals that year, Pearly? Yeah, yeah. From McGuire? Yeah, I think that's it, yeah. 99, Sam, the first Major League player to hit 60 home runs twice. Right. When last you see Sammy Sosa, though? He look white. Them a bleach. If he look like brown in them a bleach. Boy, look here. Sammy look like Casper the Ghost. I didn't even recognize him today. And God to heaven, if he was supposed to get in, they might turn him back. Oh, God. I'm surprised he could travel with the passport. Unless he take a new picture. This boy look totally different. I, I thought, at first, I thought it was by the bit, um, oh, a lot of mercy. What did this, what did this, did Michael Jackson at? Yeah, skin disorder, vitiligo, no. Yeah, I thought it was that, but I really like, no, that's bleach. Sammy Sosa, I don't know who told him to go do that, right? But if you look at him, he looks nothing like when he played, bro. No, he doesn't. Nothing. I didn't recognize him. And, he, and he's added the contacts and everything. Wait, this place starting to give yellow man competition, right? Think he won't be white? Boy, I don't know. I, I know I know. back in the day you say baseball has been very, very good to me. Well, I'm lying about now. He must be saying bleach has been very, very good to me. Because <laughs> I don't know, boy. He looked like a totally different person right there. He sure does. I, I, I don't get it, man. You know, love the skin God put you in, man. Love who you are. There's only one love of you. Body. See, that's another discussion for another day. But love your body, man. 2002, Tom Gamboa, coach of the Kansas City Royals, was attacked by a man and his son while he was standing there first base. The two fans were arrested and charged with battery. I remember that, you know. Yeah, they, I don't remember they, that. They was all drunk up and snatch him. I remember it. <laughs> too, too, look, look. You to be able to pop. I, 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 when, when they were taken out, though, when you looked on camera, you could see like a couple of shades of red on their neck. So I figured I, I knew. Sure. And here's today's uh, quote. I was such a dangerous hitter, I even got intentional war. Jesse Stengel, New York Yankees manager. That sounded a case. He would say something like that. That was a great line. I got wa intentionally walked in bad in practice. That's how bad I am. But that's, hey, that's deep, you know. Pearly, yesterday I had from uh, today in sports history into the home court. I'll brought you, of course, by Burger King Nassau. Listen, a lot of people still concerned about Kai Jones. Still got people texting in on this Kai Jones situation. Do you have any late I know that, any but updates? I, like I said, I, I asked my son about it. He said, Daddy, I, he, he's been doing that for a little while. That ain't nothing new. And at the same time, I mean... If there was a situation of substance abuse, it would be out by now. Obviously, the team. Yeah. So, 
I guess we can only just say. And I'm sure he's up on time. I'm sure the Hornets, the, pro, the Hornets probably called him in for a test any day. For sure. Um, well, he's fine. Here's something, speaking of basketball, the Bahamas senior men's basketball team drops one spot. It's been, a few, drop one spot. It's been a few days since FIBA, the International Basketball Federation, released its latest rankings, and it has the Bahamas senior men's basketball team dropping by one spot to 57. Bahamian is puzzled by the drop-off in the rankings, even the accomplishments of Bahamian basketball in recent times. The rankings were published on the FIBA website on Friday. President of the Bahamas Basketball Federation, Eugene Whiten, said he is not letting the rankings stop them from uh, pursuing the Federation's mission. Our main concern is to make sure we continue to develop basketball in the country, concentrating on youth, family islands, and training. Now, the Bahamas has 199.4 points after being previously ranked 56 in the February 10th rankings. The Bahamas gained 12.7 points since the latest rankings came into account and uh, an argument. So I, I don't get the math on that unless, unless our folks on the feet of a board who are from Argentina. Buddy, let me, let me, let me let you how weird it, it really is. The Americans are ranked number one. And they just finished not even qualifying. Not the even Americans making the medal round. They're ranked number one. They moved Spain off the number one ranking. How does that possibly happen? When you even come to it, you come fourth. All right, we don't even have to address this. There's some issue with that, with that, with that. Um, Keanu to beat you. With that ranking. It has to be. Because if you move Spain now. Um, I'm listening to text. I, I appreciate the text. Uh, Naughty and Pearly, if you study DR's culture, you'll understand Sammy's bleaching. Look into the DR's first PM. Mira, por favor. I could go there. I didn't want to. That's why me and Pearly pumped the brakes on it, Texter. But yes, me and you on the same page. Take it easy two times. I know you mean it. I, was gonna, I could have said that a long time. Pero, you know, I choose to take a different route, okay? But I know you're talking about, about the first PM of the Dominican Republic, okay? Take it easy four times. <laughs> but yeah, it, it, it's, 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 it's deep. It's deep, Pearly. I think that's more of a conversation for the 4 o'clock hour than, than now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Naughty, tell Pearly they use the same system for rankings that tennis does. Probably so, because tennis, I can't, I can't understand how somebody who get beat is number one in the world in tennis, too. I, I don't get that either. It don't make you no sense. So we'll keep an eye on that because uh, I, I see, don't I know. I only tried that foolishness with Alabama and the NCAAs. When I see Alabama drop to 13, I am so... I hate for Saban is real hate. He messed up. He pushed my dogs. Yes. He pushed them I back, yes? I hate him as a person. I hate him as a coach. So any team that he, he coaches, I'm going to pull against. Boy, you and my daddy hold that same grudge, boy. No, he did. He came to Miami and did a crappy job. And they're trying to big him up like he's some kind of super duper good coach. Well, hey, at least he did your better than Bobby Petrino did. The Falcons leave a post it note in the lockers and all, but yeah, they came in the work the next day and they meet Petrino was gone and he left a post it note in their lockers. Didn't even coach the game. Hmm. Saban, hmm, let y'all know he was out of there, man. Saban said he don't like I mean, how you always treat him, Miami, man. I think Miami has found its coaching staff and I'm quite happy. Boy, but listen here, what's, 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 uh, what's the rumors uh, circulating and emanating from uh, Dolphin Land that, 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 that the team and, and reporters really don't understand your head coach? He has a weird way of speaking, but a lot of grunts and ahs and different things like that, and it, it takes forever to answer a question. Do you know anything about that? He's very meticulous and methodical about what he's doing and what he's saying. He's very careful on what he says. Boy, look at Pearlie going into protection mode for you. Stop my it! Coach, my coach... We know he had a problem back in the day. We but, know he but had buddy, a buddy, you met, but instantly you step in there like a proud daddy. But hold on, I would protect my coach. Now hold on, he's meticulous. He's well thought of. He likes to pay attention to no, detail. We, we do know that he had a problem in back in the day. He had a drinking problem, which he's overcome. He oh, I didn't know that. that. He used to get boys up. He doesn't hide from that. He doesn't hide from that. That's not a secret. Hold on, he used to drink when he was a 49ers OC? Probably so. He was a cocktailer. Hmm? He was a cocktailer, hey. He was, you know, but he, he's, he's overcome that. And he's fine. I, I hear he also, I also, oh, uh, he had him from being over there on the West Coast. That's a, 
you know, a strong uh, affection for, for, for women who make a living on the poles. Oh, really? He yes. likes the clubs? Oh, he loves them. Um, I go on to say a man after my own heart, but I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I... Pearly! You better call and start saying that. I don't go to strip clubs. I only say that as a joke. Strictly a joke. Listen, man, all I got to say is I think he's doing a good job in Miami. All right? I think and he's I, doing a great I, job I think, in Miami. I think, he needs, I think he needs to be commended on the job that he's done. Simply because a lot of people don't pay attention to this. But to win two games on the road, that's not easy, brother. It's not. It's not. Well, and they did what they had to do. So no you shame in the game. The you went on the West Coast, beat them, come home, and go on back out and beat them. Yeah. Now, you know, today, boy, in the final 10 party, we got an interesting look. You know, we got the power rankings. We'll talk about the power rankings. And then at the end of the day, obviously, you know, either Cowherd or Ison will give us their updated version of, of, of their top 10. And then shaking went on. And, uh, and here's another one that could, could actually be a good take home. Yeah, Rich got some good points today. But uh, let's look at, uh, see who gave the rankings today. Yeah, we'll have some sort of rankings. All ah, right, there it is. There it is. All right, Colin Cowherd. He's, he'll take us home today, his top 10 teams today uh, on the final 10. But right now, let's have a look at it, Pearly. Okay. Um, according to Bleacher Report, let's have a look at their power rankings. And I'll be honest with you. I, I don't really put faith in today. Um, you got to play your games each and every week. And at the end of the year, the playoffs say who the ultimate power ranking really is. You know what I mean? Because you could have okay. teams ranked in this and still don't make the playoffs, and we've seen it happen. So, with that being said, let's have a gander. Madam Producer, that's the final 10 right there for today. All right, and um, let's have a gander at this right now, Pearly. Here's uh, Bleacher Report's uh, power rankings. All right, here's where does every team stand entering week three. All right, so going into week number three, number 32, the Arizona Cardinals. They lost to the Giants 31 to 28. They remain after last week. Number 31, the Chicago Bears. They dropped a spot last week. They were number 30. They lost to Tampa Bay 27 17. The Houston Texans. They were number 31 last week. They creep up to number 30. They move up a spot. They lost to the Colts 31 to 20. But uh, young quarterback showed some improvement. Uh, the Carolina Panthers 29. They lost to New Orleans 2017. Again, some promise shown by their young rookie quarterback. Number 28, the Denver Broncos. They drop a spot. They lost to the Washington Commanders, 35-33. Number 27, the Indianapolis Colts. Last week, number 28. <laughs> Excuse me. This week, number 27, they beat Houston, 31-20. But watch them. They're continuing to rise. Last place schedule. Their quarterback was playing well. He's got a concussion now. Let's see where that ends up. But I think they could, they could be an upset bird plenty of weeks this season. I don't think they're going too far, but they, they could damage a team or two here or there. They can. Las Vegas Raiders, number 26. Last week, number 20, dropped down six spots to number 26. They lost to the Bills, 38 to 10. Number 25, the New England Patriots. Last week, they were nine spots. They lost to the Dolphins, 24-17. <coughs> Excuse me. Number 24, the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were actually number 23 last week, but they dropped a spot. Excuse me, even though they won against Cleveland 26-22. That was a crappy game. Oh, stop, 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 stop. I don't want you to think Micah say he got that defensive player of the year. TJ Watts say, hold on, brother. Hold on. Let's get at this. Oh, this is going to be a good foot. Yeah. Excuse me, I think Pittsburgh's going to be in plenty of games because of that defense. I think that offense is going to be their undoing. Yeah, I think because of TJ Watts, they're going to be in plenty of games. As with Cleveland, I think the anchor to that offense was Nick Chubb. We saw what happened to him. Sad, tragic. Ooh. I think, I think I Cleveland. Robert yep. Reminded me of Willis McGahee. It's the same me that he destroyed in college. I'll be yeah. honest with you. I, it could be a career ender for Nick Chubb. I'm praying that it isn't. Um, in addition to that, if you look at Cleveland, they're going to be the same thing that we know Cleveland has after last night, Pearly. Great defense. The defense going to have them in. The offense is going to suck. And then by week 9 or 10, the defense is going to quit on the offense and they're going to end up in the toilet. I really thought that I really thought the quarterback would have. I mean, from what he did, I thought he would have been back by now. He looked but he bad. Didn't know by, he looked bad. 
All right, you got the New York Jets, 1-1 one one at number 23. Last week, they were number 14. They dropped down to number two, Cowboys, 30-10. to 10. Los Angeles Chargers, last week, number 12, all the way down to number 22, dropping 10 spots. They lost to the Titans, 27-24. Damn, Sam. 21, the Minnesota Vikings, last week, number 17. They dropped four spots. They lost to the Eagles, 34-28. to 28. See, Titans move up to number 20. They were last week, number 26. They move up six spots. They beat the Los Angeles Chargers, 27-24. The New York Giants. Last week, number 20, they move up uh, one spot to number 19. They beat the Cardinals 31-28 after being down 21-3. Los Angeles Rams move up to number 18 after last week being number 24. That's what a tough loss against the 49ers will do. Only lost to the 49ers yeah. by seven. It moves you up in the rankings. Green Bay Packers, yeah. one and one last week, number 15. This week, number 17, they dropped two spots. They lost to the Falcons. Cleveland Browns, last week, number 11. This week, number 16. I think they should be further down. Yeah. They lost to the Steelers, 26-22. Number 15, the Washington Commanders. Last week, number 25, they move up 10 spots to number 15. They beat the Broncos, 35-33. Number 14, the I Cincinnati like Bengals. I like that quarterback. Yeah. Number 7, uh, last week, number 14, this week, they dropped seven spots after losing to the Ravens, 27-24. And uh, Joe Burrow could be facing that calf injury a couple more weeks. Tampa Bay yeah. Buccaneers move up uh, five spots, and they beat the Bears, 27-17. The Atlanta Falcons are 2-0. They move up. Uh, last week, they were 22. Now they move up to number 12. They move up 10 spots. They knocked off Green Bay, 25-24. Detroit Lions, last week, number 10. This week, number 11. They lost to Seattle, 37-31 in overtime. New Orleans That's Saints, so they should not be number 10. That team sucks, Pearly. Did you see that game last night? Yeah. The Saints are overrated. Bye-bye. Last week, number 13. This week, number 10. <laughs> Carolina put blows on them last night, and, and then number 10, <laughs> I don't get that. Number 9, Seattle, they lost last week, number 16, this week, and they move up to number 9, even though the last week they were number 16. They won at Detroit, so they move up. This week, the Jacksonville Jaguars, last week, got number 9, this week, number 8, and they lost versus Kansas City. Number 7, the Baltimore Ravens move up a spot. They won against Cincinnati. Number six, the Buffalo Bills remain the same. They won against the Las Vegas Raiders. Number five, the Kansas City Chiefs. Last week, number four, they dropped one. They lost. They, they won at Jacksonville. Number four, the Miami Dolphins. Last week, number five, they move up one. They beat New England. Just listen. Just listen. Number three, the Philadelphia Eagles. Last week, number three, uh, they won against Minnesota. This is a bunch of crap right here. Number two, the Dallas Cowboys last week, number two. This week, remain number two. And number one, the San Francisco 49ers, they remain number one. Pearly, y'all, oh, should, be a, y'all, should, be above, you. y'all should be above the Philadelphia Eagles in that poll, my brother. I believe that. And I I'm feel, I feel y'all team. should be in the conversation for number two with the 49ers. So Dallas is number one. That's how I feel. I also feel the Baltimore Ravens should be higher up on that on that food chain, man. But anyway, we got to get to the break, so we'll pick this up on the flip side of the break. And we'll talk to Nick Chubb industry, injury, sorry, and call a hang tight. We'll get to you on the flip side of the break as the Tuesday, September 19th edition of Talking Heads continues right after this. Ready to experience a classic Dunkin' Donut as the ultimate coffee delight? The new Dunkin' Boston Cream Latte is the perfect balance of sweet digits. Savor freshly brewed bowl espresso, creamy milk, rich dark chocolate and vanilla flavors, all topped with whipped cream and drizzled with chocolate. Available hot or iced, the Dunkin' Boston Cream Latte has the taste sensation to make your heart sing. The Bahamas runs on Dunkin'. Wherever you are in the world, Cleveland Clinic's world-class care is here for you. From Ohio to Florida to London, Cleveland Clinic treats thousands of patients every year. Ranked number two in the world by Newsweek. You can trust our caregivers to enhance your each step of your treatment journey. For every care in the world, learn more at clevelandclinic.org slash Caribbean. 
Put your best foot forward this school year by shopping at John's for your back-to-school foot care needs. From toddlers to college students, have your child looking smart in a pair of Hush Puppies, Sperry, Easy Strider brand styles, and many more. Durable and sharp, the kids will step with confidence all year. Need socks and a belt? We've got you covered. And don't forget a new backpack and lunch containers. You can find all this and more and customer service in town at John's on Rosetta Street and Carmichael Road. John's, we put fashion at your feet. The Grand Bahama News is available every Tuesday in the Nassau Guardian. Buy your local paper at Freeport Convenience Stores, Western Bakery, DeGregory's Fine Foods, and Bellevue Gifts. Want to reach your Grand Bahama customers? Then call Barefoot Marketing at 827-4578 or message them for ad rates via their Facebook page. Advertising opportunities now include classified ads too. Keep up with all the latest Grand Bahama news in the Nassau Guardian newspaper every Tuesday. What would you do with extra cash? Plan a trip. Overhaul my wardrobe. With CIBC First Caribbean, you can get comfy with savings on your mortgage cost. Buy or build your home or switch your mortgage to us and get up to U.S. $1,000 off the loan application fee. Up to U.S. $2,000 off home insurance. With up to U.S. $10,000 towards switching costs, your pockets will be comfy too. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash get comfy for more information. Conditions apply. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Talking Heads, the Tuesday, September 19th edition continues right now. Pearly, let's go to the phone lines. We got our caller right back with us. Talking Heads, Guardian FM, who's this? Hey, what's going on, Naughty? Hey, what's happening, Mystery? What's happening, boy? You good, boy? Hey, I don't, I don't know. You, you really, you need to go wait for the CIA or the FBI. Why? I don't know. You good? Anyway, That's let me ask a question. Me, man. I was listening to your. I was listening to your number. Your number one down to number twenty six or twenty five. I just ran them down, yeah. Right. And I got a call, and I missed who the number one was. Who? Who was it? San Francisco, then Dallas, then Philadelphia, then Miami, then I think Baltimore to round up. But how Dallas get up there though? How my uh, yeah, baby. But more importantly, is how San Francisco get up there, and then San how Francisco, Philadelphia San get up there. San Francisco deserves to be up there. Philadelphia deserves to be up there. Dallas should be behind Miami. Listen, I already told you, I'm not even entertaining you because I know what you're doing. <laughs> you like them people that's walk in the zoo and say, don't poke the lion. But you're the one who could take your selfie stick and poke the lion. So go ahead, poke away. I, I, I don't expect you to rate the Cowboys where they should be. I get it. That's what make this thing go between me and you, you know, and Pearly. Stop, 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 really got to prove something to me. Mystery. This season I this for to me to get released, for me to have a release. Okay. Okay, just to let you know. But the game last night, that game last night was dead. I fell asleep. I felt this like one? I was watching, I felt like I was watching the Dallas Cowboys playing the New York Jets. So I fell mm. asleep. Mm. Okay, it was a, ooh, it, was, it was really. I I expected Deshaun Watson to play a better game last night. I just don't understand what that Pittsburgh have a good defense, but I expected Deshaun Watson to have a better game. Than- a lot of people Point. expected Deshaun Watson to have a better game last night, especially in fantasy. But I think he's done nothing in the in the two years that he's off. Look at his game; it hasn't improved. It, it, looks, hasn't. Like, it, it looks like it's digressed to me. I, I totally agree with you. I totally agree. Okay, I'll lay off to me. All I know is when he used to scramble prior in his days to Houston, he, he, he was a threat with his legs. Last night he looked slow, lumbering, yeah. and labored. He just looked rusty. He looked really rusty. Like he didn't have any practice after he came back off that what that two year uh, that two year break. From from that that situation he was in with with that guy, I don't think he had any practice. It doesn't look like he looks very rusty. Well, he I came down there two long. years ago, not not this preseason, but last off season came down with a passing camp, stayed over at the Atlanta, did a passing camp over there. Uh, first day was awesome. Then they had inclement weather. The next two days he stayed in the casino the rest of the time. So he's got to put in the work. He's got to be dedicated. He's got to be committed. He's got a lot of talent, but guess what? At payday, and now it's just loafing. Yeah, I agree. And also with Denver, I expected Russell Wilson to be, I don't know, didn't expect him to be 0-2. Another one, big fat payday and gone, gone down, down, down yeah, the tubes. That's crazy. 
That's crazy. Anyway, guys. You Bernie, you had one. something to say to Mystery? Uh, what are you saying, Bernie? Mystery. Mystery. I want to say this to you, Mystery. Uh -huh. You better pray and hope and go to your father in heaven. The Dallas don't win it this year because if they do win it this year, this brother can carry on bad. I just let him I know I'm in trouble. Let I him know, know Bernie. Let him know. I, but listen, the thing about it is, Naughty have no excuses. Because at the interim, at the interim of the season, he's bragging, he's carrying on. Now, when they fall, and if Dak Prescott gets hurt, I don't want no complaints. None whatsoever. Like, he had the complaints with the Lakers. I don't want no complaints. I'm watching everything. And I still waiting for you to come pay your bill. Come pay your debt. Huh? Huh? Yeah, that ain't no, you have my jersey? I got your jersey, all right. You need to come bring, bring your ugly caucus and come do what you got to do. I'll be there. All right. All right. Have a good one, bro. You too, my brother. Cheap money by land. But anyway. I, I don't never expect him to put Dallas nowhere. If he could yuck Dallas out of it. Wait, listen, trust me. If he would know, it's him right there. Wait, what? But anyway, I digress. A lot of, lot of football left to play, Pearly. I got a couple of texts coming in. Naughty, please let the people know that the Dolphins head coach is authentically human. Okay. And 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 we love him. There you go. <laughs> you like that? Amen. Authentically Amen. human. Amen. You know, ha happy know how to put it in, in, in the right words. Pick up the happy man. And here's another Damn. one, Pearly. You, you know you know who this is. Hey Naughty, tell Pearly go easy on the choke burgers in that deep fat fryer, man. <sighs> Jeff, 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 Jeff. Jeff texts me but eight times today asking when he show. I say yes. Jeff is my again. boy. Jeff is my boy because Jeff does make me laugh. I ain't gonna lie. It is hard to make me laugh. But if I was in the but ballroom then, watching you two go off, I'd be sipping my cocktail, laughing my behind off because Jeff does catch it out of nowhere. Tell us where he lay off the choke burgers and out of your fry You know my one response to Jeff today is? That's why your Yankees in last place. Shut up. That ain't for you, Naughty. That ain't for you. Yes, but don't talk to Jeff like that. Don't talk to our listeners like that. Mm. All right. Without, without them, be, without them, be, you know, yeah, yeah, be, no, be, no, be nice to our listeners. He, he's not going to go anywhere because he's he's ra raveling in the especially host. especially such a, a a learned you know knowledgeable uh, a regular contributor like Big Jeff. No, no, no. It's fine. He ain't going nowhere because he wants to have the opportunity to tease me if the Dodgers don't win the World Series this year. I he's want it too. Because you're becoming that guy again, just like you was last season. Not and yet. I warned not you. Yet. I yet. told you, not Pearly, yet. slow your roll. Didn't I, didn't I go out there and say, Pearly, I said, boy, slow your roll, Pearly. Didn't I warn not you? Yet. Not yet. Not yet. We are a good team last night. Beat up on Detroit again last night. <sighs> we done clinched the division. So we're we the 10, 10 out of 11 years. We're the National League West Division champions. Okay. Let's have a gander, Pearly, at some info. Who's in and who's out? All brought to you, of course, by Tropical Gyros. Because as you know, last night, boy, I tell you, um, big situation with uh, Nick Chubb. That that look could could be a career ender. Man. I, I really I, don't want to say that. I, I was gonna, I was going to pick him for my fantasy team, and somebody grabbed him right in front of me. Pearly, you forget Nick been riding with me the last four years in fantasy. Oh, in the that your team? Oh, yes. I had you a need running back. You need a Nick, running back. Nick, then. Nick won me a championship two years ago. You know what I said? You need a, you need a running back then. That's why I passed a freak. I had a running backs and wide receivers too. I, I we could sit down and talk. Yeah, we but I know I noticed that DeAndre Swift, Calvin Ridley trailed. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, buddy. I I watching you. You know. Mm. And I watching now, you. How, especially now, how Joe Burrow is out, so that means Trevor Lawrence will be my starting quarterback. But listen, even though I had Nick Chubb, the good thing about it is you you, you saw mm -hmm. what I did draft night. I took Brees off for the future because I know he'd be recovered. He's doing mm -hmm. well in New York. I got mm -hmm. James Cook in Buffalo. Okay, so that's still no no slouch right there. I still got Madsen, so I got some serviceable running backs to keep me going. Well, you know, anything push come to shove, have a conversation. Yeah. I'm always listening. You're always listening? Well, now that you mention it. In this league, is this, is, is this in the league where I'm defending champ or this is the other league? No, this is this is the league where you're, you're the defending champion. Defending champ. Where, where I'm 2-0. Oh. Okay. Just, just, you know. No, no, no. No, no, no. Sorry, sorry, Pearly. Not not that league. Not that league. This is the, well, the NFL fantasy league. Yeah, this, this is where you're 0-2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this yeah. is where you Don't made that trade. I started, I started out 0-2 last year. Now, see, listen, you got some good running backs. You got you got Pierce. 
You got Dylan who's sliding in for an injured thing. Um, you traded off Swift. I don't know how you did that, but you got you got a big you got a big dude in return for that. You got oh wow, Calvin loaded at wide receiver, boy. Yeah, that's why I say we're looking to talk. Uh, and Ridley and Nakua off the list. Don't even think about that. No, but I, I anybody else we can talk to. And we're good. I see a little fella here by the name of Tyler Lockett who I like. But he off the list though. Sorry. Um, yeah, I, tomorrow. All right, so yeah, Purdy, we got the break coming up in a second, and we got Rich Eisen taking us home. Um, let me get a couple of texts. Naughty, uh, good day to you. Good day to you and Purdy. Tell Purdy, uh, he asking how my team doing, and he's not responsible. I'm uh, responding to my messages, but I'm 2-0 and in fantasy football. Purdy, oh, you better respond. No, 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 no. You can't be mentoring people and then don't respond. I, I, I must even need to send her my number so she could WhatsApp me. Boy, 2-0, oh, she's better than your team in one of them leagues. You 0-2. And, and you know what I really love about her? She's a die-hard Dolphin girl fan. That's why she's entertaining. That's why she reached out to you to give her advice. Because she good knows. People, good people. I don't, I don't have the Dolphins in no way, shape, or form. I only have you out, my, I only have you out to my, the Losers Lounge. <laughs> I'm going to send her my phone number so she can just WhatsApp me. That's where I'll keep in contact with, with what's going on. All right, let's go to the phone lines. We got another call there, probably. Talking Heads, Guardian Radio, 96.9 FM. Who's this? Hey, y'all hey. are talking about fantasy football. Please have some respect on the champs. Oh, so, sorry, 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 sir. <laughs> yeah, Not Pearly. No, no. I'm two and oh. I'm two and oh. What happened, man? No, no. But 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 hold on, hold on there. Uh, hold on there. You beat me in the league, buddy. Chef, hold on. You are a fellow sipper of the Golden Goblet in this league, okay? That, that is correct. You and that I have drunk from the Golden Goblet. We have been yes, to the yes, realm. Yes, 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 yes. Pearly, I have my, that. I have my pinky out now as I sip. There, there you go. The goblet. Now in that other league, <laughs> in that other yeah, league, I get in a bus. A bus Pearly, in that one. Pearly was the inaugural champion. But I yeah. had to beat somebody because guess what? Week one, guess, guess who lost by 0.46 of a point again? Who me, you? Me. Me. No. Yes, boy. That's the hurtful. <laughs> Remember last year in the playoffs, I ran out. Ramondre Stevenson got injured. I lost in the playoffs by 0.86 of a point. Boy, if I, that, that nah. league, boy, I get stuck hard in that league, boy. That league just hurt me. As I've had yeah. after that league. Yeah, but you, man, listen, man. It's, it's all fun. I love, I love, I love, it's I love, I love, I love, Huh? It's great banter. Yeah, man, it is, it is, it is. But, it Chef, is, but, now, now that I got you on the phone, all right, mm -hmm. and I know you're an objective <laughs> Dolphin fan, unlike yeah. some others, not not Pearly, but but Mystery and the rest of them, yeah. what take on your Dolphins so far after two weeks? What do you see you know, in your Miami I, I Dolphins? Like, I, I like where we're headed, you know. I really do, you know. Um, I, I really like where we're headed. You know, I still don't think, you know... I, I, right now, I have to say that Dallas and San Fran are better than us. Right now. Right now. I give them that. You know? So let me see this first home game against Denver. Let me see how we shape up. Okay? I, think, I think you two, are, you and Baltimore right right now might be the best two teams in the AFC, though. In all, I believe all honesty so. and I fairness. Believe so. And see, Baltimore has, a, has an E. They can easily be 10-0. Because their schedule, time. their schedule, they, they got some beautiful teams there. They, they, have, they have a light schedule. We have a heavy schedule. But I'm going to tell you, you know, that, 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 that game against going up in Foxborough and beating New England in New England, you know, and knowing what Belichick was going to do to try to take away what we do best, and we still came up with the win, that showed a lot of grit by our team, and that really, really impressed me. Well, I'll be, honest, say, no. I'll be honest with you. This is the first time Denver travels for the year. It's an East Coast game. I think you all play at 1 o'clock, correct? Yeah, one o'clock. Den Denver's, hor Denver's horrible in one o'clock. Yeah, one o'clock East Coast. We got them. We got to put some heat on them, you know. And I think Bradley Chubb, he got something for them. You know? I, I think I think you all jump all over them this Sunday to tell you. Well, see, I need a big day from Waterland Hill because I know who I play in this week, but I need a big day from Waterland Hill. Well, you ain't playing <laughs> me, so I hope they blow up for you. <laughs> no, but I like. Listen, I like I like where Miami's going. I think I I I've said in the beginning of the season. You know, that if two of stays healthy, we're going to be in conversation for the AFC East crowd. I believe that. I agree. You know, I believe that. Pearly, I know you support the Dolphins, so I know you're right there with that. But I'm going to I'm going to share some wonderful news I got this morning with you. I was going to... So my phone rings. Hey, Dad, what's up? He's called me Pops. Hey, Pops, what's up? That's my son. I say, right, he says, um, what you doing this weekend? I say, I ain't got nothing planned. He's okay. Pack your bag. Make sure I put your tour jersey in it. 
We get into the game. I say, man, oh, I ain't got no money for nice. no. I say, man, son, I ain't got no money for no game. He said, that ain't actually what you got to. I tell you, pack a bag, put your two jersey in it. We get into the game. I got tickets. So, nice. That's good I stuff said, right there, Bernie. Carrying me to, taking me to the game. I'm That's excited. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. That's, that's giving me good money. That's good stuff, Purdy. I ain't gonna yeah, lie. Fine. I ain't gonna lie. That's, that's good stuff. Are you ready? He sent me. He sent me the picture. The viewers section two hundred four, like almost like on the forty yard line. It is. It's pretty good seats. It's pretty good seats. Now make sure you send some pictures, Purdy. Oh, of course. I'll be taking pictures all day. There you yeah, go, man. Like, Purdy. Like taking my portable charger with me just to make Purdy, sure the phone. Now, <laughs> now you going. You going this weekend? I. I might be too late in the game, but I. I can make a call tonight tomorrow. See if I get you a press pass on behalf of Talking Heads, so maybe you could go up in the press box and have a little gander while you're there. Oh, that'd be See? so much fun. It's it's not even bad. I'm, I'm upset that the, the, the Dallas game is on Christmas Eve, man, and 4.30, man. Boy, listen here, Chef. Let me tell you something. Yeah, Brother, we've like, been talking oh. about that. Listen, I was talking to Cornell Mortimer yesterday listen, in the bank. Listen, I'm working, I, on, some, I working on something at KFC right now, something big. Yeah? Something big. Oh. Something right, big for right. that game. So guess what? Right. If you see that contingency going, yeah. you might be part of my contingency. We might have to get back here Christmas morning on that 7 o'clock. That's all I'm saying. All right. There's only, there's only one flight Christmas Day, brother. One flight out of Fort Lauderdale Christmas Day. But, but look here. Look here. If, we, if there's enough people that want to it's go, always empty. we can start our plane back home. I, I tell you, we'll figure something out. Oh, yeah, all right. I know it's one day, 3 o'clock. On Christmas Day, I got to be to my family dinner or I get excommunicated out of the family. That's all I know. Yeah, I got a cook family dinner, Bernie. What are you hey, talking about? Well, Chef, Bernie, right, you got to let me know what time your family dinner is, Chef, because I got to pass by for a plate before I head early at 3 o'clock. Because you know me, I'm a foodie. I will drive by and tote with no shame on Christmas Day. <laughs> all right, man. Listen, man. Right. You guys take it easy. You know, I love, Listen, I love listening to you I mean, guys. We appreciate your sponsorship and we're very proud of what you're doing, man. The tropical gyros blowing up the way it's blowing up. And, Thank you, man. Making Appreciate big, it. big things happen, man. It's, a, it's, it's, it's great to see you doing so well, Chef. Appreciate it. Still, still numero uno right, on please. my list, brother. The bowls have got me now, though. I ain't gonna lie. You put me from them gyros with them bowls. My God, them bowls good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right, bro. All right, we'll talk soon, man. Ready. Be safe. Yeah, man. <laughs> no, I'll text you. You can't get one of those press passes. You got to be part of the media to get one of them, man. All right, listen, Purdy, give me a couple of picks tonight before I choke to death, and then we can get to the break and call in Kawa to take us home. What do we need to bat, set, and forget with the Island game tonight, man? Yeah, definitely take the Dodgers over Detroit tonight. <laughs> definitely the Dodgers over the Detroit tonight. I would take the Rays over the Angels. <laughs> okay. I would take the Marlins, the Marlins and Jazz over the Mets. And I would take the Braves over the Phillies. All right, and don't forget, I think we got some WNBA action tonight, right? And, and one good one, the Liberty, John Quell, and my New York Liberty go. over the Washington Mystics. There you go. You got to add that in there real quick. I like that. I like that. And that'll, that'll, and that'll send them home. That'll uh, move the Liberty to the next round the, of the playoffs. To the next round of the playoffs. All right, so go to the islandgame.com, log on, click on the sports book, check out all the ways to play, all the ways to win, but do it responsibly, all right? And don't forget Percy's pension plan going on as well. So be sure to check out the Island Game. All right. With that being said, but just, just before you go, no, I don't ask you one question. You didn't tell me how you did with you were ten and four <laughs> before the last two games. I, I, I went twelve and four last week, eleven and five this week. Still number one in the Guardian at twenty three and nine after two weeks. Oh boy, I, I noticed y'all didn't bring me on. I would have been beating y'all right now, but that's all right next year. But you got to talk to Sheldon on that, and I got to ask Sheldon why you ain't on because I, I I I see but some drift with you. Don't need to be there. You can be there. He didn't want the rookie inaugural picker coming and win it. That's all I understand. I understand. No yeah. problem. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll make, sure I get, we'll make sure I get you in there, man, on the next one. All right. All right? Not a problem. Appreciate you, my brother, man. We'll do it again tomorrow, man, and uh, we'll get to the break. Madam producer, great stuff. Get to the break, and Colin Coward will be taking us home today with his top 10. Buckle up. We'll see you tomorrow right, right here on Talking Head. Thank you. Cancer Treatment Centers of America is now City of Hope, creating one of the leading cancer care and research networks from coast to coast, providing more of what you need. More locations means more care closer to home. 
More specialists means more expertise. More research means more breakthroughs. More advancements means more treatment options. And more options means more hope. Learn more at CancerCenter.com. Get the flavor explosion that'll satisfy all your bacon cravings. The KFC Sweet and Smoky Bacon Sandwich from the Fried Chicken Experts features two crispy strips of bacon on a premium 100% white meat chicken filet, layered with two slices of cheese, smoky chipotle mayo, and our secret surprise, sweet bacon jam, all stacked on a buttery brioche bun. Experience the sweet and smoky explosion today, as it's here for a limited time. KFC Sweet and Smoky Bacon Sandwich, it's finger licking good. We're gonna give you a check every week for a year! Percy Spencer Plan, Island Game keep you with it. Percy Spencer Plan, Dream Big, we will help you live it. Percy Spencer Plan, Island Game, we got you. Percy Spencer Plan, from the friends you can trust. It's winning is a must. Come play the game you know, cause your best chance is with us. The most trustworthy name is Percy's Island Game. So put 20 on your account and ride this easy train at Percy's Island Game. What would you do with extra cash? Plan a trip. Overhaul my wardrobe. With CIBC First Caribbean, you can get comfy with savings on your mortgage costs. Buy or build your home or switch your mortgage to us and get up to U.S. $1,000 off the loan application fee. Up to U.S. $2,000 off home insurance. With up to U.S. $10,000 towards switching costs, your pockets will be comfy too. Visit CIBCFCIB.com forward slash get comfy for more information. Conditions apply. If you test positive for dengue fever, you should follow your doctor's instructions. Get plenty of rest and stay hydrated. Keep yourself protected from mosquito bites by using mosquito nets, repellent, and wearing proper clothing. Use Panadol or Tylenol to control fever and pains. Do not take aspirin or ibuprofen. Monitor your symptoms and seek further medical help if they worsen. Call the Dengue Fever Hotline from Monday through Friday between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. at 802. 1143 or 814 4015 for assistance. This message is brought to you by the Ministry of Health and Wellness. This is Guardian Radio 96.9 FM, Nassau, Bahamas. Take out that nonsense Hail Mary. They dominated second, third quarter on the road. And by the way, they lead the NFL over the Cowboys with 10 sacks and 20 quarterback hits. Sam Howell, 3-0. Oh. I like what I saw. I said this before the season. We like their personnel. We're not sure about the coach and the quarterback, but Howell's played well. He's got a little juice. And now with Chase Young back, they're going to get you a pass rush. I thought, forget that silly Hail Mary. I thought once this game got off script, Washington was the better team easily. Number nine. The Rams are shocking. Number two offense in the league. Stafford has been sacked only once. Stafford's one of two quarterbacks with 300-plus passing yards in each of the first two games, and that's in Seattle and against the Niners. I don't care what the preseason people said. This defense is young and fast. Puka Nakua leads the NFL with 25 catches. They're going to move Cam Akers. Maybe they can get a little bit of an edge rush. I don't know what they're going to do. But I'm watching an offense right now that's clever, good protection, excellent quarterback, and Cooper Cup's coming in in a couple of weeks. I like what I see, Rams at nine. Number eight. Jacksonville. They're seven and two over their last nine games. Trevor Lawrence wasn't good in the red zone against the Chiefs, but the second highest graded quarterback this season, according to PFF. They're going to be okay. Listen, they can't beat the Chiefs. Okay. Baltimore can't beat the Chiefs. Okay. That's a problem for virtually everybody. This is a really good roster. Tough game. Indy, they figured out a way to win. They were in this game just bad in the red zone. I got Jacksonville at eight. Number seven. Buffalo's going to be fine. You know the one thing they're not right now? They lead the NFL since 20 with 27 wins by 10 plus points. That's why J-Mac had them last week. They roll downhill. If they get a lead on you with that pass rush, watch out. But the other thing to remember no giveaways against the Raiders. They shorten the routes. The Bills, Josh Allen, leads the NFL right now, believe it or not, completing 76% of his throws. So they're shortening routes, more tight end. 
more easy completions. Stop throwing the ball downtown and getting picked. Buffalo at number seven. Number six. I like the Baltimore story. They're banged up, but they had 25-plus points in their first two games. Mark Andrews coming back to tight end. Lamar Jackson, 7-1 and one in his career against the Bengals. I'm telling you, this team is, they're just, it's hard to prepare for him. There is no other Lamar Jackson in the league. And they had 178 rushing yards against the Bengals. When they start getting the lead, they're running the football. You're running out of time. Their defense is better than I thought. Baltimore at six. Number five. Philadelphia has an identity crisis. Just run the ball with Jalen Hurts. He's a power running quarterback. That's what you are. DeAndre Swift had a good weekend. Number one rush defense, number two rush offense. Don't be embarrassed. This is what Jalen Hurts is, a power running quarterback. Slide, run out of bounds, no problem. But let's not try to make this offense anything other than what it is. Power run game with a great O-line, Philly at five. Number four. Final four teams, inches not feet. Kansas City, listen, Mahomes has been sacked only once this season. The story with this team, Mahomes getting good protection and their young defense is inexpensive and really good. 14 different players, though, have had one catch. I think they're trying to figure out their receiving core. So with Travis Kelsey, let's be honest, that's the number one target. Then everybody else is getting one or two catches. I still think they're trying to figure out the offense. But their next six games, they got a lot of Ws. The teams they face in their next six games are 1-11. and 11. Bears up next. Number three. Uh, the Cowboys. They lead the NFL in point differential. One of five offenses without a giveaway. Their defense, seven takeaways. So the recipe is rinse and repeat. Conservative offense. Micah Parsons is unblockable. Force fumbles, make picks, hyper-aggressive back end, Dallas at three. Number two. Niners are 2-0, and oh, both on the road. Brock Purdy 9-0 and oh as a starter, take out the playoffs. 19 TDs, two picks, if you take out the NFC Championship due to an injury. Bottom line is pretty moves better than Garoppolo, so they move the pocket better. They have never lost 12-0 and 0 in the regular season, which uh, Christian McCaffrey is a starter. So this, this team is, it's, they're loaded. That's the best roster in the NFL. They do not have an identity cross, crisis like Philadelphia. They're not trying to figure out their receiving targets like Kansas City. Uh, they've got more uh, zip to their offense than Dallas, San Francisco at two. Number one. Miami's blowing me away. 2-0, and oh, both on the road. They've scored on 11 of their 22 drives. Uh, they're really good. They can play power football. They can do finesse. They do speed. Tyree Kill, three touchdown catches already. Again, it's really dependent on the health of Tua. You cross your fingers on that. But I, I've got to be honest. Watching them go on the road... And just, they are so creative. They know exactly what they are, and they can do multiple things. A lot of these teams right now are trying to figure stuff out. I think they will. Kansas City receivers, Philadelphia, their identity. Jacksonville's never going to beat Kansas City. People are trying to figure stuff out. I, I think Miami knows exactly what they are, and they're just trying to keep Tua upright and healthy. There's the herd hierarchy. J-Mac, your one complaint. I'm flabbergasted that you would put Washington at 10 and the Rams at 9. I mean, I, I don't know. I know we got a guest to get to. I, just give me five minutes later to just rant on. Washington, Colin? Because they beat Arizona and Denver, two winless teams? Okay, Arizona Come on. took a three-touchdown lead on the Giants. And <laughs> Denver, out. take the Hail Mary away, dominated the second, third, and fourth quarters against Sean Payton and Russell Wilson in a pretty good defense. And I mean dominated the game. So I need to go put the Bills minus six and a half against Washington. I, I, am, I need to go put my kids' future college tuition I am not, on Buffalo. And I'm not touching that game. I'm just telling you, say what you want about Sam Howell. We don't think he's great. He's got a mid-90s passer rating as an NFL quarterback. That's what it is. He almost lost the game to Arizona. That's how bad he was in the opener. Now he yet, shreds a bad Denver yet, defense. Oh, he's so amazing. Well, first game, O-line, nobody plays starters. Okay, I give everybody a pass in week one, including my picks. I'm going to go get a Everybody Matt Milano gets a jersey. pass. <laughs> go Bills this weekend. All right, Nick Wright, first things first, now joining us. Conversation last year before the injury. Man, he is now the favorite to win the MVP at plus 500. He's completed 65% of his passes, 715 yards, four TDs, two picks, and a fumble. You see the other names there, uh, that Mahomes fella? 
Uh, Josh Allen hurts. Keep your, keep your eye on Lamar Jackson. Just keep your yeah. eye on him. Who, who <laughs> else? I don't see Brock Purdy there. I got him 25 to 1 after week one. Yeah, I mean, those are the guys that should be there. I, I, Am I wrong? Should Micah Parsons be in there? Micah Parsons. Oh, I'm on a text thread with some guys. Somebody said 65 to 1. Oh, I bet Micah Parsons. And now, if I don't know, I, I don't know if that's DraftKings or what, but if he's 65 to 1 and Dal- like, if Dallas gets the number one seed in the NFC. And he and he has 18 seven, sacks. 18 yeah. sacks, he, six force fumbles. He might win the MVP. I would have no problem and voting. That's him why in. I bet Brock Purdy, but I guess I should. 